Welcome, you salty sailors, to another episode of my IDAs, or in-depth analysis. Uh, you might notice there's a little something different in this one, and I'm playing a low-tier battleship. Why am I doing this, you might ask? I'm going to get into that in a little bit, promise you. But the first things first, as always, let's look at that lineup. So, you might the initial impression you might get when you look at this, it goes, okay, I'm bottom tier. And a lot of people, this immediately sets that this game is going to be tough. Actually, it really isn't. Uh, all the There's a ton of cruisers, which is great for a battleship, because those are your preferred targets, especially in these lower tiers. The double Bellerfron, that's kind of an issue because of just the strength of the HE shell on that ship, which outperforms the Tier 10 Montana. That ship could be an issue if it's played by a competent player. Uh, aircraft carrier, yeah, it's an aircraft carrier. They kind of don't really... The only competition our aircraft carrier really has in these low tiers is other aircraft carriers because the AA is just abysmal. And But there's only two destroyers, so this is really favorable matchmaking. Uh, so with that being said, you know, let's look at where... Let's look at the map and look at... we have Both DDs are going to A. So that means that I really can't go to C. But what I will do is if these cruisers do spot anything that are maybe thinking about going to C or mess or, you know, they might give me some spotting. Because a lot of ships at this tier, including my own, we don't have concealment experts, so they get spotted pretty easily. So I'm going to be looking to maybe get some shots into C before I go in between A and B. Now, why do I want to go between A and B? I want to fulfill my role. I want consistency. Every player, especially starting out, to develop good habits, you want to have consistent games. They don't have you don't have to be winning every game, but as long as you're performing consistently, your win rate will reflect that. Um, how do you do that? How do you play your role? What's my role in the terrain? Well, heavy fire support, tanking damage. And making sure that most, if not all, my shots are taking a decent chunk out of enemy ships. That's your role as a battleship. You need to put yourself in a position to where you are constantly relevant through the entire game. So that is your role. And, when, and you have to also understand your ship's weaknesses. And I'll cover that in a, a video that's coming after this one. Now, right now, I'm kind of looking around. I'm seeing that we got about three cruisers kind of playing with the idea of going up to sea. They really shouldn't. You tend to want to go where your DDs go, but you don't want to start a lemming train. And that's actually what's happening is we are lemming training. The issue is this is a very corridor-based map. And diving in too early in certain sections could result in a very early death. So an initial lemming train isn't bad. And like I said, the, where lemming trains fail is if they stop. I don't want a lemming train, so that's why I'm going to linger back a bit in this north side. And then I see a fantastic target, Akuma. When, I, when you have these lower caliber shells, Kumas are fantastic targets. I think he's moving fast, but I notice, oh, he's slowing down. And at this moment, I pray to RNG Jesus. I sacrifice a goblin to Nuffle, the god of dice and chance. And I hope that they receive my offering in a positive way. And so it is said, it happens. Boom, an immediate big hit. I've accomplished my goal of fire supporting C. I do see another Kuma, but this guy is actually a little more evasive and elusive. He doesn't really give me a good shot and he evades pretty well, so I'm not going to hit him. Now, I do want to point out something real quick on the map. And this is a common mistake that people in the north do. This group of cruisers right here, this four, this corridor right here, especially when you have battleships playing as passive as these guys are, and then you have, you know, a decent battleship or even decent cruisers in this area, it, you are in a crossfire. You're in a crossfire from here, you're in a crossfire from here, and from here. This is a death zone for cruisers in the early game on this map. Uh, just as this is a death zone for cruisers early in this map as well, which is why this Kohlberg probably won't be long for the world. Uh, probably, you know. We actually haven't seen, we've only seen one of their battleships. So why am I making a 
guide on a tier three battleship or just playing in low tier in general why am i seal clubbing well i've had some requests to showcase some of the lower tier ships as a lot of community contributors they might make one video on it and then never touch it again um and at the same time i'm making a set I, this is my second account and i'm playing on this uh so that i can run a second clan i'm the leader of kwa and I want to run a second clan, so when KWA starts, you know, getting, we're recruiting and we're getting more competitive members, I want to make sure that if it gets to the point where we have to have a second clan, our casuals have a good port and everything to go to, and because they have helped us build the clan. You know, they have obtained the oil over time, they have made contributions, even if they aren't directly playing in clan battles. I still recognize that they are valuable members of the clan. Because a clan is more than just, you know, a competitive team, it's a community. Now, I'm putting some effective fire on the Bogatir. And now I want to move in between A and B, because now that they've capped C, the enemy team is going to want B. And I want to be here to tank damage, deliver good sh you know, del keep mi cause damage, and so on. Um, so in addition to the request and the fact that I was grinding a second account, I figured why not just show an IDA of a battleship. Now I do notice that Kuma there, and I'm kind of waiting for the Diana because, or the Dana. Yeah, it's a Dana, uh, because that's a very attractive target, but he gets completely owned and he gets actually gets flooded out by a Tenryu. And now my attention is fully, fully on B. I'm not concerned about that Bel Bellerophon in uh, E1. That's actually a battleship position a lot of people go to, and I actually have never understood the usefulness in that position. You are That island is effectively blocks you from being relevant. And I'm about to get very relevant. I know the Kuma's in B. If I was that Kuma, I'd be on that island dumping torps across that island at me the second I get spotted. And boom, I'm spotted, so... I'm actually going to start making an evasive maneuver to turn in. And then he make and then I and then we see him. We get eyes on him. And I go, "Oh, he's about to make a mistake." So now I'm turning to get my guns on target. No need for prayers and sacrifices this time. I can make this shot in my sleep. And that's a second devastating strike. And now at this point I need to start kiting. I know that Kuma's just torp. There's a smoke screen there. There's probably torps coming from there. I need to be prepared for it. But then I get greedy because I see the St. Louis about to make a stake. I know I'm not going to get hit by those torps, but I am going to get hit by that one. If I kept my turn, I wouldn't have taken any of these. But I, this is, I think, my second game in the Turin. And I want to see if I can Citadel of St. Louis. The caliber is not quite high enough. I don't think either that or my aim was off. And I had to use a repair. I had two fires, but I waited for the tour pit. And now what I'm concerned about, and uh, that's not where I want to pause it. There's a Bellerophon that can literally light me on fire from stem to stern. I got a St. Louis that can light me on fire. And they have AP fire support in the form of Wyoming. Plus there's that DD still there. So, I need to be careful. I know I'm going to take damage here, but I'd rather them shoot me than my cruisers. And if you notice where the Bellerophon and the Ichizukini is, they're not going to be attracting any fire. They are not relevant. They might have some decent fire support, but they're not relevant at this point in the battle, and they're not going to be for quite some time. So I want to use my health pool, use my armor, to a point where I can conceivably maybe get away. I'm watching the Bellafron in Wyoming right now to see if they shoot. And I really want to take this shot at the St. Louis, but I, I look at my reload, I look at that island, I go, I'm not going to hit this. No sense wasting that shot. And then I notice Wyoming's firing HE as well. And I go, okay. Angling ain't going to do me much, but that Wyoming is giving a flat broadside. I want to see if I can punish this. I see the Wakatake, I'm like, man, I kind of wish I shot him, but I didn't, and then I get a little chip because he's actually full reversing, so I only clipped his nose there. And I know my heel's coming up, so I'm actually really not super concerned. My team is starting to rally around me, and I'm looking to actually 
prepared my repairs almost off cooldown, I'm looking to maybe come back in and uh, maybe even brawl with these guys uh, if my team supports it. At this point, this game is still losable. I have seen bigger throws. And I know, okay, I, I kind of have to just stay alive here because if something goes wrong, I need to be ready to to remedy the situation. So I'm going to keep getting, keep trying to get chip damage here. And I see the DD. I kind of want to shoot the DD, but I'm like, no, the island's in the way. Bellafron's angling in. Uh, sure, we'll, we'll shoot him. He stopped, he stopped his maneuver, so let's take that shot. Can't hit the Wyoming because of the island. And I did, you know, mediocre damage. Not great. And I'm looking at this Wakatake, and I really want to shoot him. He's the biggest threat to me right now. Um, but I have cruisers. Uh, the Ishizuki's rallying in. I'm like, if he gets spotted again, I'll take the shot. But he doesn't really get spotted. So, Bellafron it is. He seems to be the focus of the team, so any chip damage can help, you know, get him down. See the Wakatake again. I'm like, man, I want to shoot him, but no, he's dead. But the Ishizuki YOLO rushes. What I think what happened there is the Ishizuki was trying to snipe, which is the Ishizuki is not really built for that sort of thing. And then once he realized this game is ending very quickly, he wanted to quickly go in and get some damage. <clears throat> That's what I think was going through his head. I'm still keeping my eye on this carrier. I am a good target for him. So I'm kind of actively maneuvering. I'm trying to convince him to maybe go after something else. But I think this carrier at this point just want he knows it's lost, so he's going to go for damage. Maybe, or he'll go after me if he wants kills. I don't really know what he wants to do. But I do see the planes coming across, I'm aware. And I want to get back in range of this Wyoming. So I am kind of risking a bit here. I, I'm actually a pretty good torpedo target, but I really want to get damage on this Wyoming. At this point, I do think the game is won. So I think he's going to start moving ahead now that he's getting focused. And what he doesn't notice is that Shen Yang is moving up to use the island to torpedo him. And this is why a lot of battleships make mistakes. They're afraid of what, what, what this Shen Yang is about to do to the Wyoming. That's what they're afraid of. And that's why battleships tend to stay as far away from islands as they can. Because they're scared of it. But if you know the moments and you can predict it, you can get close to islands. Like I was close to islands this entire game. I wasn't really concerned about getting ambush torped. Because I was paying attention. But anyway, so this uh, Wyoming is going to go down shortly. I uh, get the high caliber, but uh, RNG Jesus says that's enough damage for you. <laughs> and I'm not going to get much more done here. Uh, maybe I should have turned in and pressured the host shop. Still, I, I don't play a lot of ships with wing turrets, so <laughs> I'm not really used to utilizing the, that back set. So maybe I should have just rushed in and just used my wing turrets more. Yeah, that's a thing. But the key part of this video was know your role, pick a position that emphasizes that role, and then execute to get consistent results. That's the point of this video. And if you can develop these good habits early on, you're going to be a much stronger in the later tiers. You won't have to unlearn your bad habits that some of the lower tier players end up collecting while they're in these low and mid tiers. Um, Sorry the video was late. Uh, I've had uh, production issues. My internet has been, we've been hit by storms, so my internet's been going out. I uh, also apologize for the choppiness of this video. I tried to fix that, but I think it's a replay bug with this replay specifically. So, and uh, yeah, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you'd like to see more lower tier commentaries, comment below. Um, if you'd like me to focus more on upper tiers, comment that as well. I do have a PayPal and a Patreon if you'd like to donate, which helps me improve my content even further and bring you content on a more regular basis. But that's all for today, guys, and I hope you have a good one.